think of all the great art that could be created if all the administration and you know the paychecks were all taken care of and you know an artist never had to worry about that again it's just it would be a different world i knew what i wanted to do was going to be in the arts but of the whole world of Filmmaking was kind of foreign to me. I'd done some small stuff before, but I didn't have the confidence to ask for money or know my worth. I feel like I was taken advantage of. I had no idea what an invoice was. I would literally write it on a post-it. Intuit's apps have really helped me achieve this success of waking up every day, doing what I love to do, making art because it takes care of all of the stuff behind the scenes. My favorite part about QuickBooks Self-Employed is uh, the invoices because that's how I get my money. I've definitely come a long way. I've been lucky enough to uh, be able to travel the world and perform and work on sets for Disney. I've worked on cruise ships over in Western Europe. Now here in San Francisco, working on major motion pictures. And then, you know, on the weekends, performing on stages, little black box theaters. I'm in film school. These are all different ways to express myself and do what I love. My English teacher always used to say that organization leads the way to creativity. And now I, I get what she was saying. All right, you guys are in the home stretch of the morning session, so you will get a break after this one. Um, I'm Dan Wernickoff, I'm the GM of the Consumer Group. I'm gonna be walking you through um, the third of our priorities here, delivering financial freedom for all consumers. Um, the first thing to probably unpack is, how did we end up with a new vision? Just like Intuit, we've refreshed our vision. Um, and really, it's built on the foundation of the prior vision, which is taxes are done. Um, we realized as we've continued to expand how we view the market, the consumer market, that just getting the work done quickly isn't always enough. Um, in fact, as we continue to visit customers, we're reminded by how many of them don't have the confidence to do their own taxes. For them, it's the biggest financial transaction of the year, and at the end of the day, it's the largest check that they receive as a consumer. And so um, having that confidence is, is one of the biggest problems we try to solve. And then additionally, as we've thought more and more about Mint as an asset, and we've thought about the relationship of your finances year, all year round um, with the tax event at the end of a season, we realize that these have a, a significant relationship. And so we're thinking of not just about taxes, but also beyond. So as you think about the consumer ecosystem, it's interesting, as some of you know, I was the uh, GM, I started as the GM of SBG four years ago. Um, and um, this ecosystem looks eerily familiar to me. Um, if you were to go back four years and think about small business, at the time, there were a lot of standalone applications, standalone payments like Go Payments, or standalone payroll, different mobile apps. There was no connectivity with accountants even though accountants were the most trusted partner for a small business. Um, but there was a ton of these amazing assets. And if we could pull them together into an ecosystem, we could unlock a lot of new value. Well, this is very similar. So if you start at three o'clock and go counterclockwise, um, Mint, we have 10 million customers who track income, and they track spend, and they try to categorize and understand where their money's going. Um, if you think about TurboTax, we talk about the units, but really underneath units, there's consumers, there's people. Um, over 50 million people's W-2 information is submitted through TurboTax to the IRS. You think about QuickBooks, well, QuickBooks is two-sided markets, as Sasan just talked about. Um, there are employers and there are employees. We communicate to their employees through payroll, over 10 million employees actually receive a check and view it either bi-weekly or monthly. Um, and then we also have this amazing ecosystem of tax pros. Um, through them, they do returns for 30 million consumers, but we do nothing to help them get new customers. Um, and then finally, probably the biggest asset that we have as a company is the ability to connect people to their banks and aggregate a lot of their financial information. Um, we have coverage to over 95% of 
of the consumer market's bank account information. Um, and all of this is completely disconnected right now. David, who you just saw the video for, is a customer who happens to use all of our products and he likes every single one of them, but we haven't done much to make these work together seamlessly, nor have we helped provide synergies across them. So, as we talk to our customers, you see all of the problems they have. And because we're in the finance and compliance space, they're very similar to everything Sasan just talked about, they're similar to what Brad's been talking about. In our case, it starts with this foundation of making everything easy. Our product is so easy at this point that customers only spend 109 minutes with us every year on the TurboTax side. So we are eliminating a lot of work, significantly better than when we work with a pro. But as I mentioned, we still are the minority of returns. Most customers still seek out human assistance. So 60% of them are looking for someone to help them. A good chunk of those very simple returns that could be done in under an hour. Um, and the last piece I'd say is probably the most impactful. When you do customer visits and you really visit the Midwest or you visit poorer communities, you see just how many people are struggling. Almost two thirds of the country could not pull together $1,000 in an emergency. And a lot of that, when you visit them, you realize how much of it is due to bad decisions or the inability to understand where their money is going or their, their um, willingness to spend more for services that they really shouldn't need to. So these are all the problems that get us excited about solving to help the community. Now we introduced this framework last year and this is really about thinking about different horizons of our investment. So um, it starts with continuing to lead in the DIY space. And so one of the things you should feel good about is this is our bread and butter. This is the area that we need to win. And our primary focus is here. How do we continue to win when it comes to self-directed tax completion? Um, but we also need to start expanding and building off of that platform and thinking more about transforming the assisted category. So for years, we talked about disrupting it. We said everybody ought to just do a DIY return because it's so simple. But the more you talk to customers, the more you realize the risk associated with it and the comfort that they get from assistance. And so now we think about it a little bit different. We think about how can we become a modern assisted solution. And then the third piece is evolving to more of a platform versus an app and becoming that ecosystem. And this is a, a, a big foundational investment that is underneath every single thing that we do at this point, which is pulling together all those assets so that they start to feed off each other and, and complement each other. Now there's other things that we're exploring, like how can we become a platform for developers and become a true open platform? And how can we move um, beyond just Canada and go more global? And at this point, those are not areas where I'd say there's a significant investment, they're more explore. And if you were looking at this as horizon planning, you'd say about 80% of our resources are still squarely on the DIY tax prep space while we continue to um, um, ramp up these other areas of investment. And I'm gonna walk through each of these. Um, and you know, one of the reflections I had as I took this job on, Sasan said to me, you know, I wanna tell you every tax season is unique. And I thought we were having some deep metaphysical conversation. Um, it, turns on he was being, it turns out he's being very literal, very literal. And last season was one of the toughest seasons that we've seen in a long time. Um, not only did we have the PATH Act, which changed the formation of the season, it moved much slower and more deliberately as consumers delayed filing due to some of the confusion of understanding what the PATH Act was, which was really meant to drive a reduction in fraud around the earned income and additional child tax credits. And so it delayed the refund process uh, in the return. Um, the second piece was there were additional fraud measures. And by the way, these are things that we work very close with the IRS on and are completely supportive of as we continue to strengthen this industry. Um, the second one was the inability to do a quick lookup of your e-file PIN. Um, and instead having to know your prior year adjusted gross income which all of us thought would be a very simple thing for consumers, but to just give you a sense of some of the sophistication of the broader American market, um, many people don't know their prior year AGI or couldn't find it. Um, and so what we saw was a lot of people being kicked out of the e-file process into paper filing. Um, and it changed the dynamics of how we report share. And then the third piece was it became a highly competitive market. So legacy com competition, 
um, extended their free programs. Um, and also we had um, the first credible new entry into the category um, who came with a completely free solution as well. Um, and that changed our results. So if you think about it, at the very top of the funnel, IRS returns were flat for the first time in about five years. Um, and that has a significant impact. The DIY category grew a little slower than it has historically, um, um, 0.8 points. Um, and that is, uh, actually has to be interpolated because some of those people moved to paper. It actually looked lower in e-file. Um, and then ultimately, we saw a little bit higher attrition. Um, and I will say most of that attrition growth was due to free customers, which really is at, it gets at the question that a lot of investors have asked me, which is how were you able to deliver the, the, the year financially? Um, and it really was a shift in mix back to paid, and you can see the ARPC up to $53 per return. So it was a, a very different year than we've seen. Um, another question I typically get is, um, so what does that mean for next year as you know, free is, is what would drive your long-term growth as a business? And my answer there is it does. It's something that we take very seriously, and you'll see incremental focus this year on it in terms of your long-term health of the business. But the impact of any single season or even multiple season cohorts is somewhat muted because um, those customers are monetized over a longer period of time. So this is a, a really important slide, really where we focus the bulk of our energy and it leads to what we're doing for next season. And it starts with winning with free. So last year, one of the things that we realized is we may have gotten slightly complacent in free. Being the pioneer of the free space, we assumed that all customers had awareness of our free offerings. And when we um, looked at all the results for the year, we realized actually half of, uh, of the prospects out there in the DIY category were unaware that we had a free solution, which is a pretty staggering number, and that won't happen this season. Um, we also continue to add more and more value to our, to our product. One thing that we do is we measure it pretty obsessively, and we look at Net Promoter across all dimensions. On every product dimension, on every product experience dimension, our product is superior to every one of our competitors in the free space. And we believe that um, performance is gonna normalize around that product experience over time. And so we'll continue to invest in it, as well as continuing to invest in mobile. Um, so we continue to see mobile outpacing stationary, um, both in terms of mobile web and mobile app. And so these are areas where we'll continue to, to put fuel on the fire. Now we also feel like this, this, this product is about creating personalized experiences. And personalized experiences in tax means uh, reducing the number of questions that we ask customers. Because every question erodes confidence. And we've made a large investment in a consumer tax platform with the idea of starting to interpolate and understand based off the power of our ecosystem, the number of returns that we do, understanding which questions a customer actually has to ask. Um, we're also reimagining everything that we do from a self-help perspective because what we want to do is make sure that when we're receiving calls, they're about tax expertise, not about product support. Um, and, and then finally, we're going to continue to extend our capabilities as it relates to self-employed. So self-employed, um, we know, is a big growth opportunity for us. Um, we'll continue to invest in reducing the number of questions. For us, that is our most complex customer, and we're probably the only one out there that's singularly focusing on that segment versus putting them into a generalized SKU. And we'll do that more and more with the idea of moving them over to QuickBooks self-employed when they're completed. Now, this slide's an incredibly important one. This gets at what we think is the bigger future opportunity, which is thinking about becoming the assisted player in the marketplace. Now, you can see here, one of the things we talk about a lot is we're flat on share in DIY last year, 65% share in the market. Um, that 65% share in units translates to close to 80, a little bit over 80% share in spend in the DIY category. Now, those numbers sound impressive, but what I like to look at is the overall share. And when you look at overall share, we're 25% share in people who file taxes and we're 10% share of total spend. In fact, when you look at the, the pro space in terms of pros and stores, um, they are $19 billion of spend against the 2.1 billion of revenue that we had prior season. 
And that is a significant opportunity and one that we actually feel like we can address as the low cost disruptor. So in this case, you're looking at returns that are 4x a DIY return in terms of price. And so this is a big opportunity and I know we've been talking about it for years. But while we've been talking about that opportunity, we've been experimenting. And you can see on the right hand side what we did last season with expertise. Um, we have dialed up SmartLook as a platform to deliver an expert on demand. Um, and we continue to increase the number of tax advice and support sessions. And that's a really important thing to look at. Because one of the questions I always get is, you know, how can you provide tax advice or support at scale? Well, we already do it today. We just haven't commercialized it. So last season, we did a lot of experimenting. And some of you have seen some of our experiments. And we experimented the last five seasons. But this season, we made one um, critical adjustment which is we moved the pro experience to underneath the, the uh, TurboTax brand. Um, and what that allowed us to do was normalize the experience for our customers. In the past, we had handed it to a pro. And that became um, a bit more like a commodity pro experience of moving documents back and forth. Um, the pro experience could be different depending on who you were matched to. And this year, instead, we said, let's standardize that and let's make sure that we're leveraging the common tax platform to be the, 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 uh, the way that the customers can interact with that pro. So I'm happy to say that this year we won't tell you about experiments next year, but we are going to be launching an assisted solution at scale in the marketplace. So this is a big, big move for us. Now when you look at this, um, how are we going to do it? Well, the first thing is extending TurboTax brand because the question you'd have is do people think of TurboTax as a place to come and get expertise? This is another area where we made a lot of uh, improvements last year in how we do advertising to dial up the expert versus just the software. And so we did a campaign called Relax or TurboTax. Um, and within that campaign, we saw the highest uh, um, improvements in consideration from people who had filed the prior year uh, uh, with a tax pro. And so it expanded the top of our funnel. Uh, it was also a breakthrough, um, had 140 index on the breakthrough dimension um, relative to what is benchmark. And the response rates were actually higher than the Genius campaign that we did last year by 30%. So it was a very nice campaign, a great foundation to continue to introduce our pros and, and the expertise that we provide through our software. Now, we, we need to focus then on the pros and who they are. So one of the things that we're doing that's a little bit different than, than um, what you see at tax stores is um, all of our pros are credentialed. They're enrolled agents, they're CPAs. And right now at this point, um, as, as of October 1st, we have 3x the number of pros already hired for next season than we delivered all last season. So we believe this will be a pretty scaled effort this year. Um, and we're gonna anticipate that um, when our customers need help. So the one advantage we have is they're working in our software. Um, and as they work in our software, they encounter problems. We can identify them. And, and to remind everybody, we have about three million people who leave our product to, to then go to a pro. And usually it's not because they need complex advice. It's just that they need one question answered and they wanna have that confidence of a pro behind them. So this is really gonna be about how do we extend our brand to be experts not just be software. Now this on-demand expertise takes a platform. And so we also feel pretty comfortable that we have a novel and defensible approach because we've been building a platform that allows you to toggle between a pro experience and a consumer experience. So one year you might need a pro, the next year you might not. But your data is gonna stay with you no matter where you go in the experience. So this is a, um, something that we think is very difficult to replicate. We also have a goal of you being able to schedule an appointment with a pro in under five minutes, so truly on demand from the comfort of your house. Um, and so these are things that, you know, it's overused, but we really do want to be the Uber of accounting and the Uber of taxes. Um, and the great thing here is um, the pros in our ecosystem are the first ones to join in. They're excited about it and see it as an opportunity for them to have uh, income. And it also goes after the pros that we've been um, probably the, the weakest at, which has been the ones that are very consumer-centric pros that have been going to some of our competitors. 
and so these they are now coming back and they're becoming the, the core of what we're doing um, with, with the accountants in our ecosystem. So with that, I'm going to show a quick demo so you can get a sense of it. Nearly 60% of people seek an assisted solution when filing their taxes. This year, we make speaking to a live tax expert easier than ever before. In this case, our customer is renting out his property on Airbnb for the first time this year. He's not sure if it's considered a short-term rental, so he selects expert help to find out. Our customer confirms his number and enters his question. He then opts to have a live expert connect via video with him in five minutes, instead of scheduling a call for later. Meanwhile, Eve, one of our pros, is logged into TurboTax Live from her home and is ready to take calls. She gets a notification that she'll be connected to the customer and then initiates a smart look session. Once connected, our customer sees Eve on his screen, where she walks him through the ins and outs of how to properly log his Airbnb rental. By the time the call with Eve is finished, he feels confident and continues doing his taxes. Before filing, we ask the customer if he'd like to have an expert review his taxes. In addition to confirming a callback number, he also has a question about his self-employment income and he enters it into the field provided. The expert callback is confirmed. This time, Anderson is notified that he'll be connected to a customer for an expert review in five minutes. Anderson uses the five minutes to process the question and view a sanitized tax file, so he's ready to help as soon as they are connected. Anderson is then automatically connected to the customer. Our customer sees Anderson, who uses capabilities like gesturing to review his Uber income. Finally, we let the customer know his return is good to go. He files with confidence, knowing experts have answered his questions and reviewed his taxes. So from a consumer standpoint, this just is going to feel like TurboTax with a pro infused within it. But from a platform perspective, it's pretty impressive. You now have a pro interface directly to the TurboTax database. You have scheduling. You have things like collaboration and video chat. All the ingredients coming together to do something that we haven't done before. So very exciting. Now, the third piece is evolving from an app to a platform. And Brad mentioned this in his talk. Um, TurboTax and Mint are highly complementary solutions. On one hand, you have TurboTax, which is one of the largest channels out there for a thin app. Um, with a, over 100 million unique visitors, and you have Mint with 17 million uniques um, throughout the year. Um, but really complementary engagement models. You have TurboTax with 90% awareness, 70% trust factor, um, but only two sessions a year on average. And the median is one. Um, so you have a, a group that doesn't engage with us all that much. Um, now on the flip side, you have Mint highly engaging. Uh, in terms of understanding and tracking spend and understanding where your money is going all throughout the year, but highly complementary, because most of the times we can infer what's happening in your life if we understand your finances throughout the year, which can inform how you would actually help someone complete their taxes. Um, so two things that are very important. Now, when you start looking at what's underneath all that, um, there's some of the most valuable data in the industry. And I always feel like it's very important to mention um, our data stewardship um, policies, which are more restrictive than what's required. Um, we're always going to be 7216 compliant, which means we'll get consumer consent. We're never going to sell our customers' data. It's in their control, and we'll be as transparent as possible any time that it's being shared with a partner at that moment of the transaction. Um, and so this is something that's very important. But the most important thing is making it portable for consumers so they can solve their own problems. So if you know their financial transactions, or if you know their income, if you know their credit score, their mortgage data, um, you can start to optimize their finances. So we know that about two-thirds of our customers their finances are not optimized. They're paying too much for what they use in terms of financial services. And this should be a way to identify it and get them the right offers. Now, this is another place where we did a lot of experimenting last year. We had talked about student loans going into the season. And the reality is student loans was a way for us to, to run water through the pipes. Um, and part of that is understanding how to position this with consumers so that they provide consent and understanding whether or not there's value for them at the end of doing that consent. And so we started the season out 
with a consent rate that was one fifth of where we ended the season, which then allows us to um, ex experiment further this season by offering more financial services to those customers. We also validated um, TurboTax as a channel by driving over a million customers to a credit score application. Um, and like Brad mentioned, we validated, even though it was a small set of customers, that when they use the two products together, they have a higher conversion rate. And so this was a very important learning season last year, which takes us to what we're doing this year. We're gonna continue to put fuel on this fire um, and get deeper TurboTax and Mint capabilities integration. Um, you're gonna see us start to play a little bit more with integration of payroll data. Um, we think that payroll data is some of the most engaging data and customers typically go to check their payroll. It's one of the things that they do when they work in online banking and we think that that's a good way to get them engaged with our ecosystem as well. And then we, we know over time that we can also bring experts to these consumers, the people who are trying to manage their finances throughout the year. And turns, it turns out actually a lot of our CPAs or enrolled agents are also CFPs. And so they think to themselves, how can I help consumers even further through the platform that you've created um, with SmartLook? Now that's all in service of eventually becoming a broader trusted open platform. And um, this is an area where I think we've failed historically. Um, we have not come up with a great beyond user paid business model, a way that we can help consumers at no cost to them, but monetize through financial service providers that are looking to get access to customers in a seamless way. And so this is an, an area where we'll focus a lot more energy as well this season. So with that, I'll roll a quick demo here as well. 44% of Americans can't come up with $400 in an emergency. Taxes are just one piece of our financial life. Our customers have access to the most important data, like their credit score. With customer consent, we break down the elements of our customer's financial picture, putting them in control. By knowing where they stand, we help them learn about their financial opportunities. Finances are always in flux. We constantly monitor our customers' data to keep them in the know, yet give them the tools they need to make sense of their unique situation. We compare our customers' data to millions of others in similar situations while decoding the mystery of finances. When they have questions like, do I have too much debt? Do I have the best interest rate? We get them the answers. As customers explore these insights further, then they see how others like themselves compare. Our customers can access their numbers at any time by connecting their accounts. With consent and a tap of a button, customers' information can be shared with our partners, effortlessly joining the pieces of their financial life. Getting our customers the information that matters most gives them a more complete picture of their overall financial health. Knowing where a customer truly stands gives them more control to make the best choices for the future. So powering a piece of that is what we're calling an insights engine, which allows us to benchmark a lot of the tax data. So again, these are the customers who are providing consent, um, but it allows us to give you comparisons that aren't just about your income compared to the rest of the world, but it can be your income compared to 25 year olds that live in your direct neighborhood. Um, and this is an area where we know that we'll get people engaged and we'll help them understand how they're doing, which is one of the biggest challenges and a foundation to doing better in the future. Now, we're not announcing anything specifically here, but we will be doing a product announcement at Money 2020 in two, three weeks, where we'll be talking about a brand new product that's, that's tied to this uh, initiative and, and, the, and the demos that you're gonna see outside. Um, which takes me to my conclusion. I think, um, you know, if I were just to put a bow around everything, I'd say, you know, we talked a lot about transforming assisted, and we talked a lot about um, becoming a platform but really foundationally, um, the most important thing is winning the tax season. Um, and we think there's plenty of room to go and we know exactly what went wrong last season and, and what led us to slowing down our growth and just holding share. And we think we have a formula to re-accelerate it. Um, but we also feel like we have to have dexterity. We have to start thinking about what the next big opportunity that's adjacent to DIY tax is. And it's two things, it's thinking about becoming an assisted solution that's really technology enabled versus store enabled um, and starting to think more and more about how we can unlock a lot of the, the data uh, that the consumers have for their benefit to help them live better lives and have more financial freedom.